Well, the first in the nation primary held in New Hampshire, as you know, with expectations running very high for Donald Trump yesterday. Nikki Haley still hanging around, but not doing too well. The last polls on the eve of voters casting the ballot showed the former president with a substantial double digit lead. The Boston Globe had Trump with a 22 point lead over Haley. 60-38. Trafalgar had the same margin, 58-36, and the Washington Post a bit closer at 18 points. Heading into New Hampshire, Joe Biden was not even on the ballot because of the Democrats playing games with the primary schedule this year to give him an advantage. It gave an, it gave an opening, that is, to Minnesota Congressman Dean Phillips. But in a strange, almost surreal effort at the very last minute, the Biden team launched a strange write-in campaign after saying previously it didn't matter to them if he was on the ballot or not in the Granite State. Apparently it did matter. So how did the race turn out on the red card? Let's start there. Well, now with about 95% of the precincts in and still counting, Donald Trump has 55% of the vote just over. Nikki Haley caught 43% of the ballots cast, meaning it's a double digit win for Trump, 12 points, but not nearly as dominating as some of those polls were indicating leading into the contest. Some, like the Boston Globe, like I said, had him winning by 22 points. And the reactions were strong as the numbers rolled in, including from Nikki Haley, who conceded the race in New Hampshire, but also said she would not be dropping out anytime soon. Here she is. I want to congratulate Donald Trump on his victory tonight. He earned it. And I want to acknowledge that. Now, you've all heard the chatter among the political class. They're falling all over themselves saying this race is over. Well, I have news for all of them. New Hampshire is first in the nation. It is not the last in the nation. This race is far from over. There are dozens of states left to go. Well, Nikki Haley is certainly right about one thing. Most people do think this race is over. Some have thought it for, for a while, contrary to anything she said last night. But her campaign will lean on the fact that while Trump won by double digits, which is a huge margin of victory, he didn't win by as big a margin as some polls suggest that he would. CNN, of all places, may have an explanation for this, at least in part. Here's what was said there. Take a look at the numbers. Among Trump voters, 70% of them, according to our exit polls, are registered Republicans. Donald Trump, his support, 27% of his voters are registered undeclared or independents. Uh, 3% were unregistered before today. Look at how that compares with Nikki Haley. It's a complete reversal. It's an alternate universe. Among Haley voters, 70% are registered undeclared. Only 27% are registered Republicans. We also see this with when asking people, did Joe Biden legitimately win the 2020 election? Which he did. Among Trump voters, 80% say no. They say it wrongly. No, Joe Biden did not legitimately win the 2020 election. Haley voters, it's the complete opposite. 83% of Haley voters say correctly that Joe Biden was the legitimate winner in 2020. Only 15% of our voters say wrongly that he was not. This is the Trump, Haley, Mars, Venus election tonight in New Hampshire. Well, kind of weird, right? Look, I'm not suggesting a conspiracy theory here, but it's clear that the conservative electorate has largely rejected Nikki Haley across the board so far. They want Donald Trump back in office, and they cannot understand why Nikki Haley continues to hang around in the race when her road to the nomination becomes smaller and smaller and frankly impossible. Pretty much everybody in the party is getting on board with Donald Trump, including the embattled RNC chair, Ronna McDaniel, who had this to say. Looking at the math and the path going forward, and I don't see it for Nikki Haley. I think she's run a great campaign, but I do think there is a message that's coming out from the voters, which is very clear. We need to unite around our eventual nominee, which is going to be Donald Trump, and we need to make sure we beat Joe Biden. It is 10 months away till the November election, and we can't wait any longer to put our foot on the gas, to beat the worst president, to beat a president that's kept our borders open, allowed fentanyl to pour through, allowed inflation to, to go rampant. He is hurting the American people, and we need to do everything we can to unite so that we can defeat him. Yes, the party finally coalescing around Donald Trump because they know it's over for Nikki Haley. Congressman Byron Donalds of Florida 
Well, he summed it up this way. This thing is over. We know this. This is going to be Nikki Haley's biggest opportunity. She's 10 points down with 50 percent of the vote in. This is like when you start off on those roller coasters, Sean, and you start really low. That's where she started, 1, 2 percent. You crest all the way up. You think things are going well. And then you go over the edge, and it's downhill from there. South Carolina is not going to go well for her. Nevada is not going to go well for her. Florida is not going to go well for her. It's time for the party to unite. This primary is over, but she wants to hang around, so we're going to have to beat her in a couple more states. All right. So what about the primaries coming up uh, next to Nevada than South Carolina? Coincidentally, Nikki's home state. Right now, she's down big in both. And the question is, does she want to try to save her political career or bet it all on beating Trump? And if she does the latter, why? Why is the question? Listen to this. Well, you would think that she would try to avoid the staggering humiliation of what is setting up to be a historic defeat in her home state. And as your other guests have mentioned, New Hampshire was where she bet everything. It would have been the perfect state for her. And not only is she going to lose by significant double digit margin, but she's going to lose despite the fact that a record number of unaffiliated and Democrat voters participated in the primary, a record low, according According to exit polls, 47 percent of New Hampshire Republican primary voters were actually Republican. And yet Donald Trump still notched this massive victory. So it's an even more significant victory than it appears on paper for Donald Trump tonight. All right. So you see, I want to explain something. If I could close circuit for the Nikki Haley campaign, because maybe you guys aren't getting this. Maybe you're not aware of this, but generally losing your home state especially the state where you were governor, a fairly popular governor, it's considered a pretty bad thing for your political future. 